नीचे लगा नीचे यहाँ पे यहाँ पे यार ये आपने प्रोजेक्टर को बंद कर दो यार बंद कर दो बंद कर दो Contestant number two, Hassan Javed, purpose of being, purpose of being, Hassan Javed. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. The person speaking in front of you is dead. I died three years ago. I had to just breathe last so that my family get me buried in the grave. Contest chair, judges, and my friends, let me share you my story of life to death. There's my cousin, her name is Aina. Out of love, we call her as Anna. When I completed my second year, she asked me, Hassan, what are you going to do? I said, Anna, you have so many questions. She said, what are you going to do? I said that there's a friend Ali. He has told me that there's a qualification CA, which is quite reputable and highly paid salary. CA qualified gets highly paid salary. So I want to do CA. She was shocked as if I have said her that I'm going to commit a suicide. I'm going to commit a suicide. Then she said, your major subject in the second year was biology, and now you're moving towards the chartered accountancy, the commerce field. I said, don't worry. I will work hard and learn accounting. She further argued, you wanted to become a doctor in your school life. I said, yes, in your school life, when the teacher asked a question, what's the aim in life? We used to say, half of the class used to say, I want to become engineer, and remaining we used to say doctor. And so I picked doctor, and accordingly I selected pre-medical. So, so I, now I have decided to move to do CA. I'm not going to do, uh, be, to, I'm not going to become a doctor because doctors are paid very low and CA are paid very handsome amount. She said, okay, best of luck. Time passed by. After five years, I was in CA and she got married. Uh, and she moved to the island. After three years, she returned to Pakistan and asked me, hey, Hassan, what's up? I said, I am in CA final. Still? <laughs> yes, actually, CA is quite hard, and it was not of my type. I have selected the wrong field. Now I have to just focus on and complete the CA. She asked, what's the plan after CA? I have, no, I have not made any plan. I am just focusing and concentrating on CA. I have finished CA, then I will move on. After two years, Anna again called me. And here I was qualified. She said, finally, Hassan, congratulations, you have been qualified, and you have been a chartered char char accountant. What plan? I said, the plans are very simple. It's time to enjoy. It's time to chill. I have exerted a lot of myself in my, my life. Now I want to move on. I have to enjoy my life. Now I will go for a good job. I will marry. Then I will think what to do. After some times, I got married. And there's two favorite questions of our society. You might have faced these two questions. When you're a bachelor, if the girls are spinster, you will be you are asked, when will you get married? Once you are married, then everybody will ask you when you're going to have your child. Come on, this is not the only purpose we are here in, in this world. Well, moving ahead, after some times I got a son and Again, the Aina, the same, my cousin called me, Hassan, congratulations, I'm really happy for you. How is Shota Hassan? I said, thank you very much, Aina. 
I have been quite, you know, uh, thank you, I'm glad you have called me. She said, what's your plan afterwards? I said, nah, I have been quite fed up of answering you of this question. Please don't call, ask this question. Well, if you have asked me, I'm letting you know, well, I have lived my life. I have done what I had to do. Now I have to think for my son. She said, you have never planned for yourself how you're going to plan for the other. With this comment, she put off the phone, two, two, two. This was not a joke for me. This comment made me realize that I am nowhere. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not only my story. This is a story of millions of Pakistanis and billions of people living on this planet. Living on this planet. We, we from our school, from our school towards you have no professional qualifications. We, we are just quite busy in getting the good job. We do things what we don't know why we are doing it. We move ahead where the destiny takes us. Where our destiny takes us. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, here comes that what we are doing that our today is not different from yesterday. We are spending our smooth life. We are not going to change anything else because we are not pondering to think upon it. Tomorrow is not going to be different if we, if we do not analyze and do not ponder about it. Can I ask a question from the audience? How many of you sit, uh, write your goals on the paper? How many of you, uh, quite, I think six, seven, it's quite good. The number is quite good. Well, in the America, if you see the states, only less than 3% people write their goals on the paper. And only 1% people rewrite and review their goals. Ladies and gentlemen, setting goals are very, very important. This gives you a long-term vision and short-term motivation. It keeps you, it helps you in organizing your resources, your time, and it guides you what to do and what not to do. Ladies and gentlemen, our life, the way we are spending our life is quite, you know, it's like a dead body. As I said in earlier that we are just, you know, that we are just soul and needs to be buried again. We are just a, like a dead body which needs, to be, which needs to be buried in the grave. We are placed in the mortuary and waiting for the last breath because we are not going any, doing anything else great. This is the last thing which I want to ask a question. There were two families. They both wanted to go to the Lahore. They traveled from, started traveling from Karachi. They traveled for 20 hours. They traveled for 1,200 kilometers. But one family reached to Lahore and other family could not reach Lahore. Why the other family, second family, could not reach Lahore? With this question, I return control to the contest chair. There is a one minute silence for judges. Contestant number three, Talha bin Hamid, Lalabais, Lalabais, Talha bin Hamid. Babies, 
Don't we all love them? When you hold your pride and joy for the first time in your arms, it seems all the love in the universe has gathered into your heart and is flowing through your eyes into the eyes of the angel. And then the angel looks back at you and goes, Madam Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters and sufferers, they cry. The sound of a baby crying is the most hideous sound on earth. We would do anything. We would make a fool of ourselves just to make it stop. We had our first direct encounter with this sound in 2009 with the birth of our son, Asfandiya. He was a perfectly calm, peaceful, angelic baby. Then we brought him home. He kept us awake at night. He kept the neighbors awake at night. My wife tried to sing him lullabies, but to no avail because he was barely audible. That's when I decided to step into the ring and I said, Honey, I got it. So here's Asfandiyar bawling his lungs out. And here am I with my lullaby. Say your prayer, little one. Don't forget my son to include everyone. Sleep with one eye open, gripping your pillow tight. Exit light, enter night. Take my hand, past to never, never land. Magic. As from the hour, fast asleep, and my wife staring at me, slack jarred, no doubt in awe of my talent. I calmed her down and said, Honey, don't worry, it's a lullaby called Ain't a Sandman. It's about a demon that descends from the heavens near the apocalypse and throws sand in everyone's eyes. And my wife said, honey, I believe that was beautiful. You toss and turn so much during the night, I'm afraid you might hurt yourself. So let's put a pillow between us. <laughs> OK, fine, whatever you say. Next year, we had Shanze, and she was a colic baby. My god. Her lungs could rival that of opera singers. But little did she know that she had met her match. So here she is, bawling her lungs out. And here am I. Mama, just kill the man. Put a gun against his head. Pull the trigger, now he's dead. Mama, life had just begun. And now I've gone and thrown. Away. Wait, wait, wait. Gun killing? What was that? Don't worry. It's called Bohemian Rhapsody. It's about a boy who kills a man and then his soul goes to purgatory where heaven and hell battle over his soul. That night, Toastmasters, my wife, as a sign of increasing love and admiration, put a second pillow between us. <laughs> Next, we had Xenia, and she was a perfectly calm and quiet baby, and I had the lullaby to match. Sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. Sometimes I feel like my only friend is the city I live in, the city of angels. Lonely as I am, together we cry. Under the bridge that day, is where I lost some blood. Wait, wait, lost some blood? What's up with that? Relax. It's about a boy who is so poor he has to sell his blood to buy drugs. My wife was thinking and she said, Em, I believe you and your talent cannot be contained within these walls. They deserve a bigger stage, a bigger bed next door. <laughs> Against all odds, we had another child. But this time, I was not prepared to take any chances. So I had the lullaby pre-approved. Let it go, let it go. I wonder the wind and sky. Let it go, let it go. You will never see me cry. Bothered me anyway. 
The door burst open and my wife rushed in. I spread out my arms to receive her. She extended her claws to strangle me. <laughs> Honey, what are you trying to do? What did I do? You ruined that song for me forever. Don't ever sing again. You think these poor kids sleep because of your singing? They sleep to avoid your singing. <laughs> Never mind, I learned three lessons. One, no more babes, sorry. No more lullabies. Two, earplugs can be a lifesaver. And three, I'm a genius. Einstein, the Beatles, Beethoven, Mozart, all had been ridiculed at some point in their lives. Why would I be any different? And besides, I was being a father. There was someone who sang to me. There was someone who made a fool of themselves because they couldn't stand the sound of my crying voice. There was someone for whom me crying was the most hideous sound on earth. Don't we all have that certain someone in our lives? And today, they cry in silence. They're cranky because they rarely get to see us. They are sick because we never get to talk to them. They yearn for our attention. They hunger for our affection. They gave up everything. Their lives, their careers, their time, their love, their dignity. It is high time we tried to return at least some of their endless love. We don't owe them just one day. We owe them all of our days. Madam Contest Chair. Please.